Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. I had an interesting set of dreams last night after watching one of my favorite movies and also reading something that was in the Matrix chat this morning. Somebody had very eloquently written how the California right to repair bills, loopholes, would most likely work and how, you know, the companies that uh, I talk about a lot on this channel are most likely going to be getting around it. And, you know, I've kind of been thinking about this for a while now. This has been a thought, I'll be honest with you, that's kind of been in my head since around the beginning of 2022. And I think about this a lot because I'm coming up on 15 years since the first time that I had opened a MacBook to try and repair it in a professional capacity around Thanksgiving of 2008. And, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the things that I've tried to do for a very long time uh, since starting what I doing what I do is I've tried to make it so that people starting out where I started out would be able to start out and have an easier time of it. I found it particularly difficult difficult to start this type of business, and I found it difficult to get to my current position. And, there, you know, I've noticed it tends to be two types of people. The first is, it was really hard to get here, so I'm going to make sure nobody else can get here. And then there are the type of people that say, you know, it was really difficult for me to get here. I'm going to make it as easy as possible for me of the past to be able to get where I am. And one of the things that I've tried to do a lot over the past 15 years is make it as easy as humanly possible for somebody starting out where I started out 15 years ago to get to where I am now if they were starting out with no college degree, a high school education, no resources and like 200 bucks in their bank account. And you know, I've been trying to do that with um, a lot of what I uh, what I create on this channel. Like in the early days, I used to um, uh, post on a lot of web forums to tell you what cross compatible screens were because most of the websites selling them did not do that to you. You know, the the difference between an LTN 154 um BTO2 and an N154C6LO2 and the frame is off and nobody tells you that the frame is off on these two different seemingly cross-compatible screens can really screw you if you have a customer. Or, you know, writing a lot of the board repair guides or doing a lot of the board repair videos where I try to make it easy for you if you don't have Spectrum Internet to be able to figure out how to fix a board or any of this type of stuff. I've always tried to make it easier for the people that are going to be coming into the profession. And one of the things that I find really interesting over the past uh, several years is... Um, that does not seem to be a lot of the case anymore. You know, one of the things that I, I look at is one of the first videos I did on this channel was A- minus versus A-grade LCDs, which uh, over here, which again, because I use Spectrum Internet, will take about 20 seconds to load on the screen. Thanks, you know, shout out to Spectrum for providing garbage internet for $100 a month. Uh, this is a video I did. It's actually my first video. It, it demonstrates the pride that I took in using A-grade screens rather than A-grade screens, back when you could actually source that. And now I look at my own website. Like, my own website in 2000. And, um, and 20, you know, but back then, uh, this, when this video was made, not only were we considerably cheaper than the Apple Store, considerably faster, but I thought we were a better deal. And now I look at my own website, and I've actually had to edit it to say, uh, you know, changes so over here, 2023 update. Over the past few years, uh, you know, we cannot get the, uh, we can't find LCDs the way we used to, and we can't get new ones. So the display is not going to be new, and we're also probably not a better deal than the Apple Store. And 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 for several different services, I honestly look at my own website. And I don't even feel like I'm a, I don't even feel like I'm that great a deal anymore. And. It's not because I don't want to be. It's because we literally, as it says on my web, my own site, uh, Apple has won here. Panel brokers will not sell us the LCDs that go into MacBooks anymore. And you look at the uh, LCDs that are available, and they're mostly factory rejects. Uh, bad factory rejects, by the way. Uh, they, they, they just... They, they look horrible, and they will have obvious defects that I would not in a million years ever consider putting into a customer computer. You look at some of the um, of the MacBook uh, board repair pricing that we have, and for some of the MacBook boards that we fix, we'll have to spend upwards of $150 to $200 on a single donor board, whereas even just five or six years ago, you could just buy the chips that you needed from Mouser, DigiKey, CIC to do the jobs, and that's you know been reflected in the board repair pricing that we have now. And one of the things that I've been you know kind of mulling over in my head is the is you know one of the things that I've always thought is would the would have I made it easier since I started down this path for somebody who got into doing what I do to be able to do what I do than what it was 15 years ago and I I don't think it is. I think it's actually much more difficult to get into what I do now than it was 15 years ago, in spite of all the efforts that I've put into trying to make it easier, whether legislatively or educationally, by producing content that tries to make this a little bit easier for people to get into the profession, for people who weren't able to in the beginning because the guides that were available just kind of sucked. Um, but I think I'm honestly looking at the wrong question there. The, the right question appears to be something more along the lines of, would the Lewis of 2008 even be able to get into doing what I do now, today? And I think the answer to that is a resounding no. 
I don't even think it's about whether it would be easier. I think if you take me as a high school, you know, high school diploma, 19 years old, and you try to plot me into today's world, it's not a question of whether I, it would be easier or more difficult for me to get into this profession. I think it would have been impossible. It was only 200 bucks. Like, it, it, it's just not happening. Because, uh, again, many of the services that I offer now, like, you know, uh, data recovery on hard drives or um, a lot of the other stuff that we do, uh, it, it's based on a path that we walked to get here that's literally like burned away behind us. You know, again, the money that we were able to make off of all these other services that we used to be able to offer at better rates, we were offering a better value, uh, led to us being able to do component level border pair, led to us being able to afford to buy the equipment and everything that was necessary to start up. And it led to us being able to, you know, do all the experiments that were necessary to get to where we were. Uh, that, that, that stuff's literally gone. And, you know, it reminds me of, of a movie that I, I watched last night that I think sparked this rant. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's called No Country for Old Men. I'm going to spoil the movie, so if you don't want to have one of the best movies of all time spoiled, please don't f finish watching this video. But it's, you know, it's, it's about, you know, these, these guys that are trying to get some money from the middle of the desert. Uh, one of them is a hitman that's trying to recover the money from a drug deal. Another is just some guy who thinks, oh, I hit a lick, you know, there's a, there's a pile of money in the middle of the desert. I'm just going to grab it. And the hitman is essentially seen as the bad guy because he's actually willing to kill people for it. He's willing to kill other people's wives just to get back and so on and so forth. And at the, at the end of the movie, uh, he gets hit by a car and you think he's finally going to get his, but he doesn't. He actually just walks away. He just he just walks away and gets away with it. And uh, the person who had been chasing him the entire time, who was the sheriff, is always too far behind. He's always like one step behind to be able to actually stop him from doing what he's doing, stop him from killing more innocent people. And at the end of it, he quits. He gives up. And he pretty much gives his monologue. He tells you about two dreams that he had where, you know, the world is just getting worse and worse. Uh, he had these dreams where, you know, he was going to live up to the foot, live up to the legacy of his father. And he did not do that. And now he quits. And the, the movie is essentially about the fact that at the end of the day, what you see in most other movies and television shows is bullshit. The idea that the good guy is going to win. The idea that the good guy is going to somehow beat all the odds and, you know, manage to, um, to save the day and the bad guy is going to end up in prison or dead or in jail or reformed. And that's not the way the real world works. The, in the reality, a lot of the times in the real world, you know, the good guy tries for 40 years and fails and gives up and then is just depressed and sits home all day while his wife goes to work and he has no purpose. And the, um, and, and, and the bad guy just kind of walks away scot-free after killing a bunch of people with no consequences and is probably richer for it. And it kind of makes me, and, and, and when I, I look at the parallel to that and like what I'm doing now, like I'm reading this Matrix post that was posted and it's talking about how the California bill, it's talking, it's very, very, very eloquently describing how Apple and many other manufacturers are going to be able to get around it without actually having to provide anything. And I, it makes me think about the time that I've spent in this field. You know, again, I, I've spent the last 15 years doing my best to not put up a moat so that other people cannot get into doing what I do. I've tried as much as I can to extend an olive branch to kind of lift people up so that if you were starting out and you were starting out in the industry a little later than me, or you were starting out with a little less knowledge, whether it's LCD cross compatibility that I was talking about on forums 15 years ago, or whether it's just board repair stuff that I'm posting about on a regular basis, I've really always kind of tried to make it so that people can, even from the very early days, could kind of catch up to where I am, even if they didn't start out where I was. And the, the, the harsh reality, if I look at it, is over the past 15 years, not only is it more difficult to do what I do now than it was when I started, but I would dare say that the me, again, the me of 2008, starting out again with 250 bucks, would not have a more difficult time. It would just be over. Like, I'd be back to Model Sporting Goods after a month of trying to get into this profession. And uh, that makes me wonder, what have I actually been doing for the past 15 years? Have, have I done much good um, in my time in this industry? And uh, would it have actually have been better off if I wasn't in it? Like, truthful, honest question. I mean, like, at this, point in, at this point in my life, I can't complain personally about what I have. You know, again, I have an excellent reputation. And I, I realize this video is kind of getting into the Linus, I'm thinking of retiring meme at this point. Uh, but it is a question that I really do ask myself. And it's why I haven't been as active on the channel as I used to be. And it's also why I haven't been as active doing the board repairs on camera as I used to be. Um, I really think that this industry may have actually been better off if I never entered it. Uh, I... Like you look at the last 15 years and it's actually gotten more difficult. Everything has gotten more difficult. Uh, the, the, uh, again, I have a 
world-class reputation, 4.9 stars on Google Maps, over 1,600 views. I have a, I have a house. I have uh, money in the bank. I have a girlfriend that genuinely cares about me that is an amazing and beautiful person. I have a good circle of friends. And that's all great. But at the end of the day, if you're not making life better for the people that are going to come after you, for the people that wish to follow in your footsteps, for the people that wish to follow along, follow across that bridge that you went across, um, what's the point? But like, truly, what is the point? Again, if you're not making life better, if you're not making uh, it more possible for the people that want to follow in your footsteps to be able to do so, and if the world in that sense is actually worse off, what, what's the point of the stuff? What's the point of the, the life you build, the reputation you build, the, the house that you own, or any of these types of things? Do they really actually matter? I think about this a lot because maybe the ultimate red pill is that Nothing is actually designed to be fixable and that that was never actually sustainable to begin with. I've been thinking about this. What if, what if, imagine that repair was never actually sustainable to begin with. What if society has been getting poorer over the past several generations, living standards have been going down and down and down, inflation goes up and up and up. What if the only thing that makes anything make sense is the fact that companies are able to make things cheaper and cheaper and cheaper? Because think about this. I know this kind of sounds extreme, just, just for a moment. Most of the goods that are made, again, if you have to produce spare parts, that means there's capacity to produce spare parts. That means that those machines at those factories can last longer. It means that there are more resources available to produce those spare parts. And that means that somebody's paying for those. If you're able to streamline it to the point where you say, we want to build exactly 800,000 of this and not 800,001, and you're able to create the process so efficiently that you can create exactly 800,000 of this device and not a single one more, does that mean that the process for making the screen, the process for making the keyboard, the process for making the battery is that much cheaper? And if it makes the process cheaper, that means the company makes more money. If the company makes more money, their market cap goes up. Most Americans have their money in a 401k, which is invested in, for the most part, the S&P 500, most major companies, which means the wealth of them gets to go up, even as living standards kind of go down in other areas of life. Maybe the honest-to-God red pill is that the idea of simply having the capacity for repair is something that we can no longer afford. Maybe that's why it doesn't matter what bill passes. Maybe that's why it doesn't matter what public sentiment is, that the last 15 years of my work essentially didn't matter and is actually going away. I think at the end of the day, like the, the genuine red pill that I've yet to swallow but will likely have to swallow is that repair isn't viable. Maybe that's the case. Maybe it is truly the case that the only way that we can have the society that we have at this point in time is if everything is manufactured so efficiently that if we believe we are going to sell 80,000 widgets, that we make sure the machinery is calibrated to make 80,001, that we have the resources to make 80,001. No spare parts capacity, no spare chips capacity, no spare anything capacity. That's the only way that we can afford for things to be the way they are. Because let's say the value of the companies goes down because they have to spend more money manufacturing spare parts this, that, and the other. And everybody that owns stock in those companies sees their retirement savings go down. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm just spitballing here. But it really is something to, like again, see the end of that movie and realize the moral of that story is that at the end of the day, in real life, the, like, the good guy doesn't just like come in and save the day against all odds and the evil person, you know, like wind up in jail or something. But at the end of the day, I think... I think the evil person wins. I think they get away. I think they blend in. And I don't think at the end of the day, truly, nobody cares. Nobody cares. You've like the sheriff in that movie spent 40 plus, 40 plus years trying to make society a better place. He just looks at it and goes, you know, the moment they stop saying sir and ma'am, that's all downhill from there. Joking about the fact that the area that he's uh, at his county, I think it was Terrell County, just overrun by uh, drug smugglers that are just killing each other in horrible, horrible ways and, uh, and he, he can't catch up with them. He can't, you know, he can't, every, he, he gets there after the shooting has already occurred. He gets there after people are screaming on the ground. He's always too late. And at the end, does he figure out a way to do it? No, he gives up. It's a powerful movie. It's a really powerful movie, but it goes over the human condition and goes over the fact that uh, you may think you're fighting the good fight, but you don't always win. You don't always win. I don't think I'm winning anymore, to be honest with you. Like, I... In some ways, I'm watching that movie and like, I kind of think that that sheriff is me. Okay, I got a bill passed. You know, like, right as every company is 
taken away the spare parts capacity to actually even be able to comply with it. I have, uh, you know, schematics or die, like 10 years after every major manufacturer stopped providing schematics even to their own service centers. And it just is such a meme. It's not even a part of our culture anymore. I kind of feel like I arrived at each one of these points right after Anton was, you know, done committing some horrible tragedy. And I'm just there to clean it up afterwards. But I'm never actually on time. Never actually get there in time to stop it or to roll things back. Who knows? Maybe my presence is even making it worse. Anyway, it's just something I've been thinking about for a while. I haven't really had the... I haven't really had the... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Haven't been able to share it because I haven't figured out how to quite like put it into words properly. It's been like a thought that's been brewing in my head, I'll be honest with you. Probably like last 18 months, maybe two years. But I think about it a lot nowadays. I think about it a lot nowadays. Would this have been a better industry overall if I hadn't actually gotten started with it? You never know. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. See you all in the next video. For those of you wondering what this is, I'm too lazy to walk downstairs and get my speaker stands for my Axiom M3s. These are, I got these used for $160. Amazing speakers. I put them on their side for when I'm doing a video, but they're actually really good. I got a set of speaker stands downstairs. It's hot in Texas. I just don't want to carry them up the stairs, to be honest with you. But I will so that they no longer are on the, no longer on the table. Anyway, see you in the next one. Bye now.